Hey guys, James here with Zombies Are Cool Painting and welcome to another painting tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to paint up some Crix Warjacks. Now I did these up recently for a Privateer Press painting competition, so the standard's really quite high and I'm sure you're all going to learn some interesting stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right into things. I begin by using P3 Crixbane Base and Crixbane Highlight as well as Minotaur Cracked Soil. These three colours are going to be used uh, to achieve the basic armour uh, we're going to be painting it in grey, just like the Privateer Press colour scheme. I start off with a base coat of the Crixbane base, and then I'm going to work up my highlights uh, using the other two colours in varying amounts. To dilute my paints, uh, because obviously the Privateer Press colours aren't thinned out for airbrush use, I use my own custom mixture of thinner, which I will discuss further later in this video. You can see here I'm just demonstrating how I mix up uh, my highlight colours using my airbrush. All I do is I just stick a drop of the brighter colour into my airbrush cup, then I come in with a hacked up old brush and I just sort of stir it around in the airbrush cup. It's really very easy and uh, you know I dilute the paint a little bit uh, occasionally just to make sure that it's thin enough so I get some nice smooth gradients on my model. As you can see, as I'm building up the highlights, I really uh, I make the area that I'm highlighting significantly smaller. In this last highlight, which I'm doing right now, which is almost pure cracked soil, I'm really just directing it at the top maybe millimetre of the entire armour panel. And this is really important because we want to preserve the grey colour on the model. We don't want to drown it out with a desaturated highlight. It would make it look really strange and we'd lose the coloration of the area that we're painting in at the moment. Now I'm going to be painting in the uh, smoke slash flame effect on the top of the uh, jack and to do this I'm going to be using a progression of uh, Minotaur paints. I'm not going to be telling you the names because A I don't know and B it doesn't matter. Basically you've just got to start off with a white, work through to a yellow, work through a couple of green tones and then all the way down to a pure black. You can use any colour from any line, uh, I'm just using Minotaur here. Now I mask off the rest of the model, so I've just got these uh, flames uh, showing because I, I don't want to accidentally get any of the green paint onto the nice grey armour I've already uh, done. So basically I take a bit of blue tack, uh, otherwise known as poster putty, and I apply that around the flame areas, and then I just grab a tissue and I rip it, uh, get a bit of a hole in there, and I put that over the flames and just push it into the poster putty or blue tack. And what this is going to do is it's going to quickly and easily mask off the entire model bar these flame areas and smokestacks. Uh, so that's going to give me uh, a nice easy way of painting these in uh, with the airbrush. I begin by base coating uh, the flames in white. And next what I do is I go over these with yellow. Um, the point of the white really is just to give a foundation for the yellow. You don't want to be trying to spray yellow over black, it just doesn't work. Uh, so next I go in with green and with each of these um, layers I'm just spraying further and further towards the top of the flames to create this really cool sort of uh, effect. Uh, so I keep going with the green and then finally I finish off just with some pure black just on the most uh, raised areas of the flame and this is sort of mimicking uh, how the flame cools down as it gets further away from its source of origin. After I've finished all of the painting, I then go in, remove the tissue and the blue tack and reveal uh, the flames, which are really pretty cool. Um, obviously, for these flames, I decided to go with a green colour. The reason I did that is it fits in more with the fluff and background of the Crix models. And because I'm doing, going to be doing a lot of green OSL on the rest of the models, I didn't want to be sort of detracting from that by creating some really stark, bright flames on top. Um, but, you know, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, just as a quick note, uh, these flame flame things were made myself, and uh, they were made using melted plastic card, uh, which I used a lighter, I set it on fire, I then dragged a piece of wire through it, and this created this sort of textured effect, um, and then I just pinned them into the smokestack. So that's how I did that, and I will have a full video tutorial on how to achieve that effect uh, in a later video. But as you can see, it's really quite effective and it really gives these models a bit of a unique uh, little extra something, which is really important when you're doing a competition. Because I didn't really want to drastically change the colour scheme, but I still wanted to make them pop and make them interesting, so that's why I decided to go with this effect. Alright, so now I'm going to be painting in the beak on the front of the model, uh, which is essentially bone, 
Uh, so I'm using three colors. I'm using Mummy, Earth, and Bark, all by Minotaur. I'm gonna start off uh, with a base coat of Bark, and then I'm gonna work my way up through the other colors to achieve the highlighting effect. Now, as you can see, I'm not masking anything off. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm capable of just hitting these areas uh, without accidentally hitting anything else. Uh, because these are the only bone areas on the entire miniature, uh, I'm, you know, it's just really effective to paint them in with the airbrush. And the other handy thing is, because we've got this sort of separating uh, detail, we've got that uh, sort of metal grill uh, separating it from the grey armour, it means I don't have to worry about, you know, masking because I've got that sort of buffer zone uh, in there which makes things really easy. Now I decide I wanted to go in up the contrast and sort of refine the grey armour on the model a bit. So I'm taking some Citadel Null Oil uh, to give us a bit more shading. Now this was the first time I'd ever used this wash and uh, basically after using it I would not recommend this to anyone. I say the best option is to go with the Army Painter, uh, Army Painter Black Wash. That's the best way to go because this stuff is uh, not particularly impressive. It kind of dries with a white chalky sort of stuff in the recesses and I had to go and fit around and touch things up so I do not recommend it. Uh, anyway, basically what I did with this is I didn't use a typical sort of application. I took a bit of it and I applied it to the lower edge of the armor and then what I did is I rinsed out my brush and I came back in with the brush moistened with water and I blurred the transition between the wash and the armor plate. And what this means is we get a more uh, selective blend. We're not dulling down the entire armor plate. Uh, it's not going to affect our highlights and it's just going to give us that nice sort of black line in the recess, which is what we're going for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some paint chips and rust, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be using my standard paint chipping slash rust color, which is, you'll never guess, Reaper Master Series Rust Brown. And I'm going to be darkening that with some pure black. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I need it to be a bit darker. And uh, basically what I do is I just apply um, chip-like uh, patterns to the model just using my brush. I alternate between small chips, big chips, uh, scratch-like things. Uh, basically, I just try and make it look natural and pick out any areas where I think the model realistically could have been hit by debris or anything that would have damaged the paintwork. Next, I use pure rust brown, and this is going to be used to achieve the rust streaks um, that are going to be coming out of around the rivets or from the paint chips. Uh, this is just simulating where water would have collected and gotten a bit rusty and mixed with the um, damaged paint and all that sort of stuff and run down and created these streaks. Now this is thinned out quite a lot, probably about uh, one part uh, paint to three parts water and I'm just applying multiple layers of this in a glaze-like fashion. You can see occasionally I come in with my finger and I actually wipe away some of the paint uh, because it was a bit too stark and this also creates nicer blends. It's important you build this up slowly over time. You don't want to go all crazy and uh, just, you know, slot paint everywhere because it won't look realistic. Take your time and this effect can really look very effective and very nice. Next what I do is I come in with the cracked soil, which is our brightest highlight color, and I underline the paint chips. Now I thin this out just a tiny bit and I'm very careful to keep these lines super fine. I don't want to overdo this. I also don't want to go over too much of the rust um, streaks that we achieved earlier, so that's why I'm making sure the paints are nice and thin. Um, it's really important just to take your time, to be really slow, really steady, because if you're not, then this technique just won't work at all. I also use this same color to go in and pick out some of the edges of the armor plate just to up the contrast a bit further. I now go ahead and paint in all the metallic areas. I use P3 Blight and Gold and Citadel Iron Breaker to do this. I haven't really included any footage of this stage simply because you can't really learn anything from sitting there for a few seconds uh, watching me base coat stuff. It's pretty pointless and uh, yeah, I just wanted to get on to more important things. So now what I do is I use Awesome Paint Job Rust Wash. Uh, now if you want to find out this recipe, I will link to his video on how to make this in the video description. Uh, this is one of the best ways to create like a nice rust sort of finish on your basic metallics in my personal opinion. It's quick, it's easy, and it looks really cool, uh, particularly when you combine it with other effects. It's also a lot faster than going in and using lasers of paint to achieve this, uh, which is what most showcase level painters do. I find this gets really nice results in a short amount of time, which is why I recommend it. You can see also I slop a bit of this on some of the armor panels. That's cool, it just adds to the overall effect. Now I take Army Painter Strong Tone Ink 
uh, this is basically just a wash and I apply that to all of the metallic areas. This is going to create our nice dark shading and just dirty things up a bit and make it look good. As you can see, I'm being quite liberal uh, with this wash. I'm really not worrying about subtlety or anything. I'm heaping it on because I really want to dull down the metallics. So what I do now is I highlight the metallics and to do this I use P3, Brass Balls, Solid Gold and Quicksilver. Uh, now I'm just going to use these to pick out the edges of the metallics. Um, I'm sort of I'm doing more blending on the gold than I am on the silver. With the silver, I wanted it to look a bit more rusted and beaten up, so I just sort of applied a few scratches and applied it to the edges, as you can see me doing here. Whereas with the gold, I wanted it to look a bit bit newer, a bit smoother, so I sort of applied more layers to get a nicer gradient and uh, not as sort of beaten up or weathered as the silver is. Now what I do is I take Reaper Master Series Pure White, uh, as you can see the uh, the name's worn off my bottle, it's so overused, but um, basically I just use this to block in all the areas of OSL. So that is these sort of vents on the side of the war jack, and also there's these little ones sort of underneath it, uh, which I pick out as well. Um, now this is an important stage because this is going to uh, be the brightest area of the OSL. We're going to go in and fix it up with some airbrush stuff too. Uh, but this is kind of important. I don't like using just the airbrush stuff because it means that everything is uniformly bright, whereas really the source of the light should be the brightest area. This is kind of a little bit tricky to uh, capture on camera because of the angle of things and the way my setup is uh, organized, but hopefully you get the idea. Now I take my Renegade Chrome airbrush. I don't normally use this. I only use this for the finest areas of detail and uh, essentially I thin out some of that same white paint. I use my airbrush thinner, and uh, just a quick note on the thinner, uh, basically that's a mix of matte medium, water, drying retarder, and flow aid, and uh, yeah, it works very well uh, in my opinion for thinning out acrylic paint. Uh, so basically what I do is it's really quite diluted, and I build up layers of the, the white paint uh, just to achieve this nice uh, object source lighting effect, and it's, it's gonna look really smooth, and it's really easy to do as well, uh, as long as you're okay at getting fine detail with the airbrush. All right, so the final stage is to grab some of the Reaper Master Series clear paints. So I use green and yellow, and I start off with the yellow and work my way down to green. Uh, the yellow is sort of, I keep that in the brightest areas, uh, and then I sort of fade out the edges with the green to achieve uh, the sort of appearance of the light diffusing uh, as it spreads away from the source of the light. And uh, some people use the Minotaur Ghost Tints for this. Um, it's a pretty common way of doing it. Uh, but personally, I prefer the Reaper Clear Paints because they dry with a matte finish and it means I don't have to chuck a matte varnish over the top of it because if you do that, it dulls down your metallics and it's a bit of a pain. The final stage is to throw a green wash down uh, on these areas just to sort of darken in some of the recesses around the um, source of the light and uh, create a bit more definition. And to do this, I use a Secret Weapon Green Wash. Alright guys, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I finished off the piece by constructing and painting a display base. Uh, this was done with a few bits of wood, and uh, then I textured the inside using plaster, rocks, and I also added some details like some skulls, uh, etc. I then also did the top of the base, and for that I used some secret weapon leaves, uh, which really add a bit of an extra element to the whole thing and make it stand out a bit more. Uh, so I think it was a pretty cool piece. I really like how the battle damage turned out, and I think overall uh, it should be... Uh, Quite, quite a nice thing to be chucking in my cabinet, and hopefully, if I'm lucky, it might win an award. So cheers for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I will see you in a later video.